Is it actually right to base the curriculum on the issue of ethnicity or colour? We don't study Oliver Cromwell or Elgar or Sir Isaac Newton because they are white. We don't study the Brontes or Jane Austen or Marie Curie because they're women. We don't study Oscar Wilde because he was gay or Einstein and Marx because they're of Jewish heritage. We study all of these because they were leaders in their fields and they've also helped to shape the country and the world in which we live. At the moment, we celebrate every October Black History Month and a tremendous amount of good work has come out of that. But should we therefore also celebrate Asian History Month or perhaps two months of Asian history? According to the uh, 2011 census, our Asian population was more than twice the size of the population from Africa and the Caribbean and what phenomenal histories there are of China and the Indian subcontinent. What about the Eastern European population, the fastest growing sector of the population in the first decade of the 21st century? But the problem of dividing the curriculum in such a way is that it actually stresses disunity rather than unity. But there are two things that unite us regardless of ethnicity or colour or religion. And that is, of course, one, we live in Britain, and two, we are British. And I should argue that by studying and understanding traditional British culture and society, we will help to create a more cohesive society, a happier society, a more united society. Now, no, that does not mean that we should aim at monoculturalism. There is a limit to what we can teach. We can't teach everything, and if we choose to teach one thing, we have to miss something else out. So surely we should concentrate on what unites us. In the 1983 general election, Sachin Saatchi produced an election poster that featured a black male with the caption, Labour says he's black, Tories say he's British. Now one criticism of that poster was that, of course, it's possible to be both. British history, British literature, British culture. Culture is just as relevant to the child with a different background or the child from a deprived background as it is to the rich child who goes to an expensive independent school. Why? Because they both live in Britain. Because they are both British. Why is there a medieval Anglican church in nearly every town and village? Why do 90% of the population um, uh, celebrate Christmas in one guise or another? Why do we speak English? Study the country's history. We should study the country's culture and allow everyone to access that culture. And if we don't do that, then I'm afraid there will be some sectors of society that are forever excluded. I want to argue, therefore, that the curriculum should be primarily British-centric. Only if that is the case can we level up the country, and only if that is the case can we create a truly cohesive country in which there are equal opportunities for all, regardless of their background. We must also encourage young people to realise that they belong to a very diverse Britain, and to understand that diverse Britain, and also to realise that they live in a much wider world community. So I'm going to suggest three ways that we can add to the British-centric curriculum. Firstly, we should take every opportunity to discuss, study and celebrate diversity. And that's not just in lessons, it can include during assemblies and pastoral time as well. So, for example, United Nations Day, Commonwealth Day, Martin Luther King Day, Disability Awareness Day, International Women's Day, World Science Day, as well as all the major religious festivals. These are ways that we can broaden horizons and deepen understanding of a very diverse world. Secondly, we should use the curriculum, the British-centric curriculum, to make wider links. So in English, yes, we should concentrate on English literature, but let's also study some world literature. So although we are concentrating on Britain, we are seeing Britain not in isolation, 
but seeing Britain in a wider world context. Let's try and cover the whole picture, the full story. It often leads to some very uncomfortable truths. So Churchill, yes, the great war leader, the great national hero. But Churchill, of course, was also an ardent imperialist. He opposed Gandhi, he opposed Indian independence. Studying the whole picture is sometimes difficult. The British Empire, again, a topic I think everyone should study at school and understand that the British Empire led to the development of slavery. We saw the crushing of indigenous populations, indigenous cultures. But on the other hand, you are studying the growth of railways, the growth of infrastructure, the opening of schools and universities, the spread of the rule of law, the stamping out of the slave trade. And finally, of slavery itself, a topic that I think all school children should study because along with the Holocaust, it teaches, if nothing else, about man's capacity for brutality and inhumanity. So the full picture of slavery, yes, includes the obnoxious barbarity of the Middle Passage and the enormous profits that British traders made. But we must also understand that slavery flourished in Africa for centuries before the Europeans arrived, that Africans also made large sums of money from physically capturing and enslaving other Africans and then selling those slaves on either to Europeans or indeed to other Africans. Equiano, uh, the ex-slave who became the leading abolitionist, was himself from a slave-owning society. So the full picture is often uncomfortable and unsettling, but it is necessary in the interests of fairness, objectivity and accuracy. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. I'm arguing that we should have a British-centred curriculum, British culture, British history, British development, but that should be set in a wider setting. The result should be that we produce students who are broad-minded, broad in outlook, but also students who have a deep understanding of the country in which they live. And if that is the result, then most importantly of all, those youngsters will be able to be actively engaged in the country in which they live, and hopefully they will actively contribute to its further development.